ISED Senior Symposium. Um, this, this is Molly Bohan, and, and her topic is Scientific Communi Communication in the Web, a Case Study of the James Madison University Farm. Hi, everyone. Thanks for sticking around for my presentation. Um, like I, it was introduced, my presentation is Scientific Communication in the Web, a Case Study of the JMU Farm. And this project was completed in tandem with the other stream restoration projects. Some of you presented those projects, and some of you are here to see them. Um, but we'll cover a bit of the background on those projects later on. And uh, this project was advised by Dr. Carol Nash. So a little bit about myself. My major is ISAT, and my, I'm a dual concentration in energy and environment. There's me, and um, <laughs> there are two reasons I was really interested in doing this project. The first was because I saw the need for an informational website to promote the use of the JMU Farm as an educational resource. And the second was because I wanted to explore the um, field of scientific communication and its connection to web media. So a little bit about this project itself. Um, th this project was completed by, well, this project facilitated the design of an informational page for the university farm, which would attract student and community engagement as well as environmental re remediation by documenting and organizing current and past projects at the property, as well as researching methods and implications for scientific communication in online media. So some background on the JMU farm. A lot of you have probably heard this already, but just for those of you who haven't heard about it, um, it was acquired in 1929, and it was originally used for student recreation as well as outdoor education. It was originally managed by a division of student affairs until 2007, although research was still being performed on the property. Then later, it was in 2007, it was turned over to academic affairs with plans for it to become an educational facility with outdoor lessons as well as faculty and student research being performed. And I took a lot of photos, so you'll see those on the slides. Um, so some of the current uses of the JMU farm, the first is that student and faculty projects are, of course, still frequently, frequently taking place. Um, the second are that uh, property restoration, which includes the construction of an amphitheater and the reopening of the hook house. So the reasons for this, this restoration is necessary are because upkeep kind of um, took a, went down to the back burner during the 70s and 80s, and um, some pieces of the property really degraded. And so now the JMU Farm Committee is working on restoring those aspects, as, including the hook house and expanding um, resources for Commu the community on the property. Um, so right now it's being used for a lot of recreational purposes as well as for student and staff meetings. So then we'll cover some background on the Stream Bank Restoration Project, which a lot of you were part of. Um, and you can see in the photo on the top right, that's pretty much everybody that was really involved that hadn't graduated already because there were two, two, there were three past projects of um, individuals that have graduated that are working in the real world, but they really <laughs> contributed to this. Working in the real world. <laughs> and, this isn't real. And gave us the background information that we needed to move forward with this, so we can't thank them enough. But um, a lot of these sub-projects encompass 3D modeling, the bank erosion hazard index, GIS imaging, view shed protection, as well as the planning of a boat ramp. Um, so my web page project was completed in tandem so that I could highlight the student, faculty, and staff efforts that were taking place to protect the property. Because if anything shows that the community cares about the property, it's that they're doing hands-on work on, um, on maintaining its, its soil structure, its banks, making sure that it literally doesn't fall into the river. So that's nice. And then you can see the charrette meeting at the bottom right. That's where um, the, the groups performing the stream restoration research came together and talked about their different conclusions from these sub-projects on what we could do to restore the banks. So next it says picks or it didn't happen. So a lot of the reason for my performing, my completing this project was that was so that more than the people that was that were performing the research would know about the research, would know about the projects being completed, because this is a resource for everyone and everybody should have an opportunity to learn about what's taking place on the property. So next we'll talk about the need for this communication. So when I first searched JMU Farm on just a regular old Google search, only two relevant search results were returned. 
The first was, led to a centennial celebration feature, which was very well written on the history of the farm and how it came into the hands of JMU and what its past uses were. And the second was the stewardship tour page, but the stewardship tour page only really links back to that original centennial celebration feature. So um, as far as facilitating a tour of, of our stewardship that takes place on the farm, it's really important to know what exactly are the projects and the environmental <coughs> restoration practices happening on the property. So I saw that this project would be um, really important to facilitate that. So like I said, neither of these pages housed any, um, were housed on a site specific to the farm. They were housed on other sites and could just kind of um, mention the farm and talked about its background. And they did not contain um, current project information and current photos. So next I'll just show these pages themselves. The first on the left is the stewardship page and here's where it links back to the history and that's the page with the history, the historical information on it. And I highly recommend reading that. I've linked to it on the website. It's just really um, unexpected and interesting information. It tells the story of how the property came to be. So next I'll start covering my project goals. Um, the first was to investigate methods and best practices for communicating to a wide audience on an environmental and scientific resource. And the second was to combine these methods with those for attracting engaged research projects so that we can continue to just build along this timeline of completed projects. And this beautiful photo was taken by uh, a past project group, um, which was Kyle, Net, Kyle Netty and Taylor Campitel, performed in 2012. So some more of my project goals. Um, another was to gather photos and appropriate content on the past and current projects, including stream restoration uh, happening this year and happening the, the past years and then to design a functional and engaging layout that fit the mold of existing JMU sites and could house all this collected content. So then I have another um, kind of silly graphic that shows different social media and it's combined with, um, with scientific media materials. And um, this is to illustrate, to expand on the idea of, of communicating scientific research and its importance. And with this I'm going to segue into um, the theoretical research behind scientific communication and web media. So in the, contents of, in the context of this project, scientific communication refers to the communication of research projects and environmental education resources to the public. And I have a quote here from a research article by Heard done in 2000 that says, technology is a catalyst that leads to new systems of communication among scientists. And this just, if anything, describes um, the, the timeline of events that led to where we are now, how we're, communi how we're communicating science to the public. It's, it's this. It, everything is so in interconnected with the technology of the times that are being released that, um, that science really can't be separated from, the scientific method itself can't be separated from the technology of the times. So these new technologies have become vital for effective collaboration. They've sped up messaging, expanded available resources, as well as widened the audience for this research that's being communicated. And here is a quote from Harold Varmus, who was the previous director of the NIH in 1999, which was 18 years ago, but it still like stands true today that all this new, new, technological, new technological developments in communication and communicating science to the public, they don't mean anything if the scientific communicate if the scientific community doesn't want to play and they don't want to participate with this um, with these new com communicational tools. So next, I'll talk about what makes the farm a good case study. So I could have done this project and talked about scientific communication and just researched that, or I could have just developed a website for the farm, but I decided to merge these two things because I felt that they were so perfectly interconnected and intertwi in, intertwined. Um, so one of my first reasons for choosing the farm was because I had never heard of the JMU farm when Dr. Nash spoke about the Stream Bank Restoration Project, and Brianna and Madeline mentioned that in their presentation as well, that they hadn't heard about it, and so I was just 
really excited when I heard that the property existed. I was like, why, why haven't I been out there some of these weekends um, just exploring the North River and introducing my friends to, to this property and to the environmental restoration taking place. Um, th these are Dr. Nash's words. Uh, she couldn't have said it better that the farm is a living laboratory used by faculty and students to study environmental problems that would that would otherwise only cover only be covered in the classroom. And so, for these reasons, it was just really important to me that I choose a farm and that I get the information out there on the projects taking place. So, first, I'll say why did I choose a website? So, a website is the, is the most common form of communicating online information. And um, so I chose that over doing a, a Facebook page or a blog for that reason, that you could easily Google search it, and then you wouldn't have to go through any other sort of websites to, to get the information, that it would be easily accessible. And then um, I'll talk about some of the, informa the background information that I did on pages in a website and sort of web design theory. So web content has been identified as one of the main factors contributing to repeat visits. As content on the web includes text, pictures, graphics, layout, sound, motion, and someday even smell, making the right web content decisions are critical to effective web design. This is from a, a research study done by Rosen and Purinton in 2004. And um, so now I'm going to show you some of my mock-ups and how I incorporated how I incorporated these different um, content features into the initial layouts that I developed. You'll notice that they are not perfect. Um, this is not in any way the final um, look of the site, so I'll warn you, especially of the color. <laughs> so um, first I developed this cover photo just to, to grab the eye, grab your attention, and um, show, also showcase some of the beauty in like, the spring colors that you'll see on the farm. And, um, and this is a picture from special collections of the James Madison University farm. If you saw this, as a student, you would be like, where is that? You know, I have never seen that image before. So it's, it's very interesting to explore um, the background on the farm. And it just has a short description. So this is kind of an example of combining um, pictorial media with, with textual media um, as far as content on the page. And this page would be the About section. So I've, I've adapted these later on to um, to other things that I've learned throughout the web design process, but this would have been the about page. It would have a picture and then it would have some information. So if this would be a little more boring if it was just the about and there was no pictorial information. If you can try to picture it without that, um, that's why this content, diversity of content becomes so important. And so this was kind of my initial idea for the gallery page that you would click a photo and it would come up and bring you into a slideshow and you could click through the photos. Um, and then I've added captions as well that when you click it, you see the caption. And here would be the list of projects. This would be the project page that illustrates um, some of the projects that have taken place on the property, to put it simply, as well as the names to give credit where credit is due. And um, then the contact page would lead you to the office of the provost and or an, a contact information like an email to the office of the provost and this was my initial idea of where we could put this website where it would link back to from the jmu page so that if you haven't heard of the jmu <coughs> farm you can go to jmu see their connection to the community and still be able to access it so next i'll talk about my biggest challenge in moving forward with this from those first mock-ups so designing and executing an achievable layout with limited web design experience was was my biggest um, mountain that I had to climb in completing this. And I found a solution in seeking design guidance and fulfilling the site's programming demands by partnering with JMU's Creative Services. Um, the individuals there were Teresa Thorne, the web programmer, and Christine Letsky Anderson, the director of the services. And so with, with Creative Services, I was able to adapt my mock-ups to something more um, more based on what already exists in the JMU web sphere. Um, so th there's the old one on the top right, and on the bottom you can see I started adapting it, but I wasn't quite there yet. That 
The problem with that um, idea for the home page was that it took up so much data that it couldn't load on your mobile device or on your um, laptop in, in a timely manner. So I really adapted these mock-ups based on the, the needs of the content housed. And then after redrafting them with the site's developers, we selected a design based on the existing JNU web page, which you'll see when we walk through the completed site. Um, and th this site was developed with Adobe Dreamweaver, which was another um, barrier to the design process. We, had, we decided to select Dreamweaver over Cascade because it enabled us more creative freedoms because with Cascade, you are working based on templates and it kind of constricts um, your ability to um, just develop based on the content that you're housing. So where would we go from here? Um, I was lucky enough to be able to meet with facilities <coughs> management and the office of the provost, um, including Gary Shears and, um, and Anna and Abe, and sorry, I don't have their last names at hand, but um, they were incredibly helpful in um, just encouraging the, the website's future. And so that just um, gives my project's confidence in becoming something that's going to be sustained for a long time and can be passed off to other people and individuals. Um, and going off of that, this is gonna be continually updated with content by Dr. and Carol Nash, um, creative services as well as the office of the provost themselves and the JMU farm committee and another thing about the JMU farm committee is that Dr. Nash gave me news this morning that um, that Jason is going to be taking the farm page and showing it to um, and showing it off to the individuals that would be um, participating in the farm's expansion and the farm's um, renewed use so that's exciting that um, it's at a point where people are ready to show it off at meetings. <laughs> so where to, my next page of where to go from here, some possible additions to communication related to this project include first an, inform an informative video on the firm's history and uses, which I really wanted to include, but um, you just have to focus on what the most important parts of your project are. And then um, once you get your deliverables, then you decide what else to add, and this is one of those things that I didn't have time to add was um, a video of the um, the beauty on the farm and and a sort of an audio content feature, as well as an OESS stewardship tour segment, um, which I, I kind of touched on earlier, but would be very important for having groups come out to the farm and know about the projects and not just the history of it, as well as signs on the property near areas where projects have taken place with concise summaries and photos, and possibly using the QR codes that are already present on the signs to link back to these projects on my page. So next, we're gonna demo the website. So this is it right now, and I can't thank Teresa Thorne enough because she was the actual um, programmer that worked based on my designs and stayed in communication with me as this came together. And so you can see I have a video of the North River. Um, this links back to the August Smith article of the farm history. And then a short about page. We actually got rid of the about page because it, it didn't have, um, because August Smith wrote it so well, it made it so that it, it almost became unnecessary to have an about with the history of the farm. And so, everything just kind of um, became housed in projects and gallery instead. But this short paragraph was able to link to that article as well as define the uses of the farm for people that were curious of it. And it's also important to have that on the main page so that you don't just see the university farm and then some other pictures and images. It's, it's the textual content that provides that diversity. And next I'll show you the visit page. The visit page was really important because the farm is hard to find. It just is. It's nestled <laughs> back in um, near Port Republic, Virginia, between farms and in a very rural landscape. So there's no big sign. There's no turn right at McDonald's. It's all just farmland. And so it, it was important to have like the exact um, location of it on a map that was could show you where it is um, visually. 
And so that was just easily embedded into the website. Then we can see the gallery, and this, these are just a few of the images. Um, I actually have this link to a Flickr account that will update it automatically as the captions are completed, and it will show you um, a diverse seasonality on the farm, um, as well as some of the image, images of the, the projects taking place. So that's, this is from the charrette meeting. And so if you click this, it links to my Flickr account, which I will pass off to um, a more formal JMU account, and um, it will still be linked, and you can see the captions will be here. So going back to the farm, this is the project page currently. So we have it organized by year, and then you see the title and the individuals that participated in it, and it just goes 2012, 2013, all the way up till now, and you can see the stream make restoration projects, and there's my project, and then we have also have this archive from 1998 to 2006 that can be viewed. Because just because they didn't have um, them, on, them listed online doesn't mean we shouldn't still talk about them. So this was um, actually added recently. And for, this is the most simple page, obviously. So for more information, the Office of the Provost will be contacted. And I'll just pull this back up. So here's some of my references. Um, these were mostly based on the theory behind scientific communication and web design. Um, separately and together. And I'd like to first acknowledge my advisor, Dr. Carol Nash, for providing consistent guidance and expertise, even though she sometimes did not have the time for it. She made the time <laughs> when I needed it, and um, for giving me advice on just managing the project in general. And um, then I'd like to thank Teresa Thorne and Christine Lutsky anderson who couldn't be here today, but um, probably would have loved to see the, the background, the presentation, just because they were so helpful and so excited about my project from when I first came to them last summer and all the way up till today. They have been in constant contact with me and almost just as excited about it as I was. So they helped me to program the page and just provided um, a ton of design guidance that I may not have easily found on the online by myself. Um, so thank you for viewing my presentation. Questions? Vicki? I have a question about your, so your maps there, is that just an image or does it automatically update based off of the traffic in the area? I was just curious. It's like a from live, a developer. It's a live Google feed. Okay, yeah. 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 From it's a, a developer's Google like feed. point of view, I was just curious about that because yeah. I didn't know if it was live or if it was like a picture from, because it just says last updated April 14th. So I, was, I don't know what that was updated. I know this changes. That is something to think about. I'm not signed in on a Google. Um, no, I was just curious if it was live, and that's fine. Yeah. I was just, okay. That was <laughs> my one question because I didn't know if it was an image Someone or. Someone had traffic information on it the other day when I was on there. It was. It might have been because you were signed in, but yeah. I'm not entirely yeah, sure that of that. Been it. That may have been it. Have you thought of using um, drones to take the pictures? I would love to do that. We actually talked about that a lot, and it just never happened because um, the people that do the drone photography weren't available. I'm, I'm assuming since it's a new technology that there's probably like a very long list of people who want to use it right away. Um, so later on, that would be amazing to get some more aerial photographs of the property and get them on the website. So you said the software that you use does, it was not based on a template? Did you create your own template? Or can you explain a little bit more about your thoughts behind that? Well, the, the software that we used um, drew a lot on previous websites that had been developed. So Teresa Thorne um, applied my designs to, and we we worked on merging that with websites that were already created. So I assume that she was able to use a lot of code that she had used previously from other websites and just merge in the content that, um, that I um, organized for her. If that answers your question. Thank you for your presentation. <laughs> How might you see this um, being passed on to um, new generations of 
ISAP capstone students, for example? Or do you see places where they can perhaps build on the work that you've done? Definitely. I think there are places in like the web content itself, and then there are also places um, where on the property they could go and um, work on signage at those project locations specific to the farm. Because even though it's it's um, a relatively small property for like for the, the space that's been used for projects, there's actually been a lot of like a lot of diversity in um, the types of projects that were completed, and I think those really deserve something physical in place. So that would be um, really cool if they um, compiled all that information and got um, those links working to the abstracts and to summaries of um, those projects. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.